Buena noche, Corillo. Buena noche. Welcome back to another episode of the BPM Podcast, your favorite podcast in the world. Welcome back to another short but lovely podcast. Hopefully it's lovely. Hopefully it's short. Hopefully it gets right to the point and we don't, you know, boil the sauce too much because if you boil it, you kind of, you know what I mean. Listen, if you're not following me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, I advise you to do so. I really appreciate it. Leave me a thumbs up, follow, share, comment. Tell me something you haven't told anyone in your family and I won't say your name. Just give me a, a, a code, you know, and we'll talk about stuff that you are keeping secret from people that you don't want no one to know that it's heavy on you. Just shoot me an email backporch Mexican at gmail.com and we'll get it sorted. You know, we'll, we'll, I'll talk about it and I'll give you my advice through the podcast or tell me your story an interesting story that you've been through, you know, how you managed to date a 67 year old lady also being um a construction worker whatever whatever it is whatever if you like sniffing toes if whatever it is just holla at your boy and let's create some content together and pro probably you're gonna have some good laughs about it so with that we start the podcast baby and um it's kind of crazy that that uh I stumbled upon this video this morning and I can't put it up because there's uh, I can't put it up on my YouTube because there is kids involved. It's a school, uh, but I'm pretty sure you've seen it, uh, seen it. it's this uh, female student that attacks a female teacher on the heavier side. She's a little heavier than um, she probably likes to, but things altercate. I don't know how it started, but it looks like uh, the student was uh, a little erratic. She was a little out of control. She was having some type of uh, episode mentally, right? And I remember growing up and being fucking terrified of my fourth grade teacher. He looked like a, f he looked like Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, Krueger or Kroger, one of the two. Well, he looked like Freddy from Friday the Thirteenth. Let's let's say that he looked all kinds of jacked up, and he was fucking mean. Like, and I didn't know my times tables at, in fourth grade because I was a little dumb and I don't think I know them now. So don't judge me on that. But um, yeah, so I was terrified of my teachers. I would have never thought that I could put my hands on a, on a, on a, a adult, let alone a teacher, right? Someone you sort of respect sort of have a, a, a decency level of respect towards this person because they're they're teaching you something that you might not ever use or that you might use however your views are on teachers uh i, I would have never thought that i could do that so the student it's a little fucking crazy they get into a scuffle by the door the 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 um, the teacher kind of like you know grabs her by the hair she can't get a hold of her they she you know she outside trips her um the student outside trips the uh the teacher and she breaks her leg now they're trying to press chargers or what have you but i remember i was in fourth grade and i didn't know my time tables so go back to that story and uh And I misbehave all the time. I was not a good student. I was not nowhere close to be like a fucking role model of a student. I was in the back of the class acting a fool. Probably had some HDHD or HDMI, whatever you want to call that. But that shit don't get diagnosed in Mexico. You just fucking, you know, you need a couple of fucking ass whoopings to get you in shape. So I wouldn't be allowed to go to recess. And it was like, oh, we'll bring you a lunch. No, you, you didn't get lunch. You, you didn't get to fucking eat. Thank God I had a cousin in second grade. And he'd be like, hey, what do you want from the cafeteria? I'm like, bring me whatever you fucking can. And he would hand it to me through the fucking window. The doors were locked. I was, if that fucking school caught on fire, I'm, I was dead. Dead, right? 
he will come in. He's like, what do you want for lunch? I'm like, well, just give me whatever. Right. So he bring me lunch to class, not his job, but out of the love he had because he's my cousin. Um, and kids nowadays are so entitled, so fucking entitled from the day they're born. They, they want attention. They want, uh, they want trophies for not, they want all kinds of things that don't, de they don't deserve. They don't, they haven't earned. Right. And I knew I was a shithead, but come on, L let me go out and play, dude. So. I would, uh, I had to learn the times tables. I didn't want to fucking learn them because I want to go out and play baseball and soccer and, and cause mayhem, but I, I had to. So I remember this one time, this one fucking teacher, I was like doing spitballs, right? With the straw and the little fucking paper. And it, one of the spitballs went too far to the front of the class and it landed on the chalkboard. And he's like, Suarez. That's my last name, so you need to know. And I'm like, oh, shit. To the front of the class. And I was like, fuck no. So he went to my desk, picked me up by the sideburns, picked me up by the sideburns. He's like, fuck it, get up. And put me on the, like, by his desk, facing the wall, carrying a fucking six books. That was my punishment for that day. And then I got, you know, I got better. I, I realized, like, oh, he ain't gonna fucking... I'm not going to be his fucking scapegoat to get all his anger out. So I got better. I learned the time table. I went to class. I went to, I did everything I could, but I just need a little incentive to be like, Hey, don't do this shit again. But this student is so crazy. They're like, don't fucking talk to me that way. You know, she's demanding something. She's not willing to give, which is respect. She has no respect. And where does this go? Where does this, how does this start? If this student thinks that she could do that to, her teacher is does, does it mean that is she doing it to her mom her grandma her siblings where does this go uh, or how does this start it does i mean teaching starts at home that's where you start teaching your your youngins morals and behavior uh adjustments you know because if you didn't know you didn't you couldn't do that well, you got to do it and then you get talked to it. You're like, hey, actually, this is not the way we handle things. We um, we don't punch teachers in the face. We just find their car, you know, flat a couple, flat one tire. And if she keeps fucking with you, you give her all fours. She ain't going home. She loves school so much. You staying at school, homie, you know. But no, you, you, in order to learn certain things in life you have to like fall on your face doing those things right so you fall on your face trying to do something you'd be like actually that's not the way i'm supposed to be doing this but most of us go through life with you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to do this but we don't know why we don't know the reason on why but obviously that's hitting a teach a teacher it's a you don't need a reason for that. Unless a teacher comes at you first, that's when you hit back, right? So this student is going bananas. And how does this lady break her foot from a standing position? I don't know. I, she just, it's, I've watched the video a couple of times. It was hard to find because like there's a, there's minors involved. So they're, they're blurring the faces. They're actually blurring the whole thing. But I found one and I was like, oh, should I put it up? I was debating. I was like, you know what? I don't want to put it up because there's minors involved and I am about to dwell in all that uh, mess with YouTube and yeah, I'm good with that. The moral of the story is, and it keeps going, which is, it's a little crazy to think that, that kids nowadays are so worked up they get they choose they're choosing violence and and i don't ever remember like having those thoughts in my head maybe i my childhood was a little bit not as bad as i think it was 
But like all I wanted to do was fuck around and play and be outside and have fun. I was like, fuck that growing up shit. Nobody got it figured out. I realized like I saw my uncle, 29, living at grandma's house. I'm like, yeah, this whole grown up is a scam. I'm going to fucking live up to the last. I'm going to squeeze every piece of memory of this childhood as I can. And I did. And I, I was wild. I was uncontrollable, yet somewhat smart if you want to call it right because i didn't really get into trouble i just didn't get caught i didn't get caught doing the shit i was doing but growing up like playing sports outside with your friends you know all day till sun came down and then you play hide and seek and you make out with like the fucking neighbor and that was fun this gets out here just fucking snapchatting and tiktoking and doing all this that's not healthy that's not a child under 13 shouldn't have a phone unless it needs to be implemented. What I'm saying is like if your child, for example, there's many kids that take public transportation to school. You need a phone. You need to be able to contact them. You need to know where they're at at all times. Uh, they go to practice. They go to this. They, 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 they have extracurricular, extracurricular activities at school. Sorry about that stumble. That's a big word for Carlos. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, th there's needs for the phone. But, like, just to have a phone, right, uh, it's a no. It's just, I think you get caught in between video games and phones and, like, you don't get to experience other people outside and, and, and read body languages and, 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 and facial cues and... You grow up in this world where, like, nothing is real. Everything's through a screen. All right, the best childhood are outside in the mud, playing around, playing tag, playing hide and seek. All those games that make no sense to kids nowadays are the ones that build you to have a, a, a normal behavior when it comes to being around people. There's People that I work with that like have no social, they have some such a like uh, social anxiety of, of people being around them because they they're tensed up. They're like, oh shit, I can't not like this and and not see it again. I have to like actually, you know, there's and I'm socially awkward when I don't know people. If I'm in a setting that like I don't know people. I get a little social awkward, but I don't let it overtake me. Like, I got to go home. I gotta, no, no. I'm like, I make an effort to be like, actually, fucking enjoy this moment. You might not talk to everyone, but talk to one person. Fucking have a good laugh about something. Well, this one person. And, and, and that's a little milestone. And then maybe that person introduces to another person. And then you go from there. But I do not like new people. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, trust issues. I have trust issues. Don't know why. They're not gonna. They, they don't want anything from me. But I just don't know. I don't know them. So I'd rather, you know, have a. a, a I'm a good judger. I judge the shit out of people like you have no idea. And I'm almost hundred percent, almost right every time. When something's off about, I'm gonna sound like a fucking hippie right now. Their energy. Like negative people fucking drive me crazy. Negative people drive me to the walls because like life is already hard. If you look at it through your negative fucking lenses, it's going to be a shit show for the rest of your life. So like shit is never going to stop coming your way. So why even bother to like uh, put yourself in that state of mind where everything's negative, nothing's positive. But life is like, oh, you think it's negative? Here you go. Right? Just just like uh, like everything else. Like when you think positive, you might be like, oh, fuck, this shit again? But you know what? You got a positive uh, state of mind that like, okay, what's next? Like I just dealt with this two weeks ago. What's next? Right? So you keep that the, that attitude where to, to keep you not in a, a fake state of mind, but like the option, the other option is being negative and being negative. Nobody likes people that are negative. 
And not that I'm trying to like be liked by everyone. I don't like me. I'm okay with you not liking me. And I like myself. That's it. At bottom line, if I like myself with my flaws and how I look, it, that's all that matters. We are trying to please all these other people to like us. But you don't even know what you like at times. Sometimes I don't even know if I like food. You know, I'm like, I just got to eat it because I'm hungry, but I don't even have like, I don't have a, and I cook for a living. What the fuck? Right. But, but negative people, it, it, it's like they don't have real problems, but they do. They do have real problems, real life problems, but like they're so caught up into their past. I think that's what it is. I think like people get stuck in a moment in their life where like they fucked up and they sucked at something that that vision of them is still trying to live the day of the day today, right? The, the day to day life, they judge themselves on the past and, and they don't give themselves enough, uh, credit to be like, actually, you know what? I did fuck up three years ago, but that's not me. I've changed. I've made uh, strives to be a better th that whatever I fucked up but we're so entitled that we want everyone to feel the way we feel right if you don't feel my pain you're not nice if you don't feel sorry for me you're not sympathetic I don't feel bad for homeless people at all it's not even one bit and that sometimes gets to me I'm like why do I not why do I not feel bad for these people well, coming from where I come from, I know people that are not legally in the States, but they're not homeless. They're out here hustling. They're out here selling fucking food. They're working under the table jobs. They're cleaning yards. They're doing this. They're striving, right, to be better. When, when you have homeless that are born here, speak the language, able bodies, and might have some mental issues. We all have fucking mental issues. When is it going to be like, okay, I have a, can, what can I do to deal with these things? What, what do I have to do to deal with, with the mental part so I can be a productive member of society? Oh, no, I'm going to just wreck my life, do drugs, so people feel bad for me and someone helps me. Bitch, no one coming for you. Nobody's coming. Better fucking... You know, so and it's not like I'm pro Americans or, 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 or pro Mexicans. I'm pro fucking get your shit together. If you can't do it here, believe me, you're going to you're not going to be able to do it anywhere else. This is the easiest place you'll ever have it to get your shit together. All you have to do is work hard. That's it. And most of the time, you don't even have to work hard. You just have to show up and move. That's it. So. Sometimes I do feel that like, I'm like, fuck those homeless people, you know, I don't even feel sad, but I, like, I'm like, is it because there's a nuance to me that like, I'm like, oh, dude, I don't have, I, who carries cash? I don't have cash. I'm going to start fucking be like, Hey, can you break a hundred? See what happens. Right. This homeless guy opened the door for me at a convenience store. And I'm like, you're not getting shit, boy. You better not open that door. He's like, good morning, sir. I'm like, fuck off. Okay. So I failed in that regard, to see the human behind the exterior, right? I, 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 I'm admitting it to it right now, to you guys, that I failed to see the human in, in, in that. But there's, I know crackheads that like work their asses off to earn that rock. They go to work every single day, on time, never miss, skip a beat. But on Friday nights, they turn up. Right. Or through the day, they just smoke a little crack to get through the day, but they show up to work. Those those are the type of people that you're like, OK, you have an addiction, but you still have priorities. You know, you got to pay bills, you got, but you still doing crack or smoking pills or whatever it is that you're doing. But if you just let go and be like, I'm sorry, feel sorry for me, you know, I it hurts my pain. We all have pains. We, you're not, you're not the only one that has gone gone through life. You think you're the only one that has problems? Well, news to you, buddy. You don't. You won't be. We all have problems. We just decide 
to look at it from a different perspective, a different perspective on how do I get out? And these kids nowadays are just, and I, I was talking about it with my son yesterday. And I was like, did you see this video? I showed it to him. I was like, did you see this video? He goes, yeah, those people are crazy, dad. And I'm like, what do you think? What, like, have you ever felt the need to like be physical with a teacher? He goes, I don't like my teachers, but I have to do the work. So I, no, I don't want to. I want to get in and get out, Dad. I'm like, okay, that's that's a good, you know. I want to get in and get out. I want to get in, do my work, get out with no issues, because his mom will whoop his ass if he brings home a fucking D. He knows too. I was like, we looked at your grace, dude, and good job. But there's a C in there. He's like, biology is so hard, Dad. I'm like, it's it is hard. <laughs> it's fucking hard. Biology is so it's it's. Not hard, it's just confusing. That's what it is. The words, this, they do this. And yeah, no thank you. That's what I'm doing. I kind of, you know, that's why I'm a fucking chef. But it at the end of the day, teach your kids, if you have kids, to be respectful of adults. There's no, like I remember like getting screamed by a neighbor of mine back in Mexico. She was an older lady and she's like, Hey, stop doing that. And I was like, I'm sorry. And I didn't yell back. I was like, I'll stop. And she went and told my grandma, my grandma put a beating on me. She goes, go get me a switch. I, this is how old my grandma was. She made me pick my own fucking beating instrument. And if I brought home a, a fucking ranky danky one, no, she had one stashed behind the stove. It was, you know, being dry by the heat of that wooden stove. Boy, I would just—I can still remember the sound if I close my eyes. She would make it whip. She would make it cry. And I'm like, ugh. But never I was like, stop hitting me. I would just take that beating, you know. And one day I got mad. I was like, I'm fucking leaving this house. She goes, bye. Don't let the door hit you. I'm like, no, I'm just playing. I don't want to go. I don't want to go anywhere. I love you. <laughs> but we're different breeds now. You know, but their kids nowadays are different. They're just fucking, they're smarter than me. They, they, for sure. Most of the kids are smarter. They just don't have the technology smarter than most adults. But they just don't have any common sense when it comes to the real world. And guess what? We still live in the real world. It's 100 years before we go into a, a virtual world where nothing on the outside matters. You just stay at home, plug into a machine, and you go to work, and you marry somebody in the fucking metaverse, and then you have kids in the metaverse. Uh, little by little, we're going to be, you know, dwindling down to the numbers because no one wants to f do anything for reals now. But with that, I'm going to leave you guys because Papa got to go to sleep. It's late. You know what I'm saying? With that, my friends, stay up. Stay blessed. Peace out, players. Players.